but whether you're a black hat a white hat or a gray hat the techniques used in hacking are largely the same. If you're a white hat testing a system for vulnerabilities you have to know how to do all the same things a black hat hacker would do. One of the main things white hats do is called a penetration test, or pen test for short. You test a system for vulnerabilities, then fix any that you find. Instead of causing damage like a black hat would. Usually, the first step in a pen test is reconnaissance or recon. In this while you gather data about the target to figure out the best way to hack into their system. For example, if you were a black hat, it would help to know what kinds of operating systems the target's computers are running so that you could launch an attack that's tailored to those operating systems. There are two different types of recon, passive and active. Passive recon is where a hacker gathers information without actually interacting with any of the target's computer systems. There are lots of different ways to do passive recon. You can look for information that's already out there like files that are publicly available on a website. Or a black hat might even try to steal old hard drives the target threw away. Passive recon strategies can take a while but when a black hat uses them, they're also difficult for companies to detect because there is nothing fishy to detect. The hacker isn't touching the company's system so there's no warning that an attack is being planned. The best a company can do is try to make sure that they don't leave any clues lying around by destroying as much unneeded data as possible even if it seems harmless. Active recon on the other hand is when a hacker tries to learn valuable information about a company by interacting directly with the company's systems. Hackers can get information more quickly this way but it's also easier to detect. That's because companies can track things like which computers are communicating with their servers. If they notice a strange machine on their network or suspicious commands being sent, they can take action like by blocking the address sending those commands. So as a white hat, part of pen testing usually involves doing some sort of active recon yourself to see if the protections you've set up can stop a black hat from learning too much. Usually, you start by looking for open connections or ports. Each open port serves as a kind of link between a device and the Internet, where data can be exchanged. And that can be dangerous because a hacker can use an open port to send code that attacks a machine. As a white hat, once you've found an open port the next step might be to see if you can tell what kind of hardware is running the port and what operating system it uses because that is exactly what a black hat would do. If you find that a black hat could collect enough information to launch an attack, you might have to rethink the ports you have open, or find ways to stop machines from disclosing information about themselves. One of the ways to do that is by using a firewall which is either a program or a whole device that's designed to block unwanted access to a computer. Among other things firewalls keep track of a computer's ports and make sure that the only ports that are open are ones that need to be open. They're like a computer security guard making sure that all the right doors are locked. Now once you've done some recon you may want to move on to protecting against attacks that take advantage of your specific setup. Penetration test on websites. For every website on the internet, there's the part you're supposed to be able to see. Like on YouTube, you can see different channel pages and video pages. But there's also a whole administrative side to websites with pages and files that you aren't supposed to see. Those pages might store information the developer needs to run the site or files that the public isn't supposed to be able to access like databases of usernames and addresses. Ideally, you want those pages and files secured so that some random person can't access all of them just by just typing a certain URL. And the way to figure out if someone could get access to them is to do what a black hat would do try different URLs and see if you end up finding pages or files that shouldn't be publicly accessible. To do this, you can use crawlers programs that automatically map out the site by visiting different links and directories. You can also use programs that try the typical URLs where this kind of information might be stored. If the crawler lands on an error page that can be important too, Companies need to make sure that the errors that come up don't contain information that a hacker can use against them. If an error says that a certain page is private, 
for example, that tells a black hat that this page would be a great target. If they do get into your system. So you'll want to be careful about how much info shows up on your error pages. Another part of the website test involves pages that use forms. Like where you type. In your shipping address or fill out hundreds. Of questions and passwords. If these forms aren't set up properly, black hats can use them as a way to send malicious code into a system. Often, they can use this kind of code to collect information from any databases a company might be using, like to nab all the credit card numbers anyone's ever submitted. So it's important to make sure that a website checks its form inputs for anything that looks suspicious and to test those protections by trying to break through them yourself. Black hats are always thinking up more creative ways to break into systems. So, once the test is done, it's time to go through the results and fix the vulnerabilities. Be alert. Stay safe.